Health officials say the goal to have some 10,000 persons tested for HIV by Friday seems realistic based on the turnout at testing sites countrywide. NCN Zunika Jones visited some of the sites and also spoke with the coordinator of the National AIDS Program, Secretariat, and the UN AIDS country representative. Here's our report. NAPS coordinator Dr. Shanti Singh says so far the response has been impressive from the various testing sites across the country. She says close to 3,000 persons have already been tested. Sites, and we did 4,504 tests last year. Um, we have over 200 sites right now, 250 temporary and, and 62 fixed sites. I think we certainly um, will achieve. I'm, I'm hoping that we will achieve. I'm confident that we will achieve. If we don't achieve that 10,000, it means that you know something really went wrong somewhere. We have now gotten started, really. The two big days are still to come. It's tomorrow and Friday when most of the sites will operate. Dr. Singh noted that all sites are being monitored to ensure testing is done according to the stipulated guidelines. She says citizens can guarantee accurate results. A part of, of that quality check also included client satisfaction survey that's done quickly on site. So if you just got tested and the quality office is there, they will administer a survey to see whether or not you were satisfied with the services that were provided. Meanwhile, UN AIDS country representative Dr. Ruben Del Prado says persons should not underestimate a negative test result by continuing risky behaviors. And most people in this campaign that takes place this week will test negative. Very happy. I'm very happy for that. But please sit down and think about the risk you could have had by having unprotected sex. And for those people who test positive, please make sure that you discuss this with your partner, with your family, with your friends. Do not carry this burden alone. It is not easy to be HIV positive, but you are not alone. The Ministry of Health and its partners, including UNAIDS, are working towards having systems in place in Guyana to make sure that having HIV is no longer a death sentence. The week of testing will conclude on November 21, which is National Day of Testing, where the private sector will become involved. Persons are being encouraged to take the test and know their status. Onika Jones, the 6 o'clock news. Thank you, Onika. The implications of the global financial crisis on the Caribbean is high on the agenda when the Bureau of Heads of Government meets shortly. The November 22 meeting will also examine, among other issues, the new political dispensation of the U.S. following the election of Barack Obama earlier this month. Here is Edward Lane. Bureau, which comprises the current incoming and outgoing chairman of the community and the CARICOM Secretary General, will hold discussions in Antigua on the global situation with respect to tourism, the price of oil, remittances and foreign direct investment, among other areas. While the price for oil has dropped, there are indications that the remittance flow to the region and foreign direct investment will likely decrease. Member states of CARICOM have already begun to sound the warning that the tourism industry faces stiff challenges in light of the situation. In addition to the global crisis, the heads of government will consider as well the impact of the new political situation in the United States of America following the election of a new president earlier in November. Disasters in the region is also an agenda item of the Bureau meeting, which is being held against the background of recent catastrophes in the region, including hurricanes and the collapse of two schools in Haiti, which resulted in 91 deaths. Implementation of the recently signed Economic Partnership Agreement between the Caribbean Forum of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, CARI Forum, and the European Commission will be among the issues discussed at the meeting. In October last, 14 CARI Forum members signed the Economic Partnership Agreement with Europe. Haiti asked for more time since the government was battling the effects of four consecutive hurricanes. Among the other issues for deliberations at the meeting is preparation for negotiations of a CARICOM Canada Trade and Development Agreement and the governance of the Caribbean Regional Negotiating Machinery. The heads of government will also focus on upcoming important fora, including summit meetings in Cuba and Brazil in December, and the 20th Heads of Government Conference scheduled for the first quarter of 2009 and the fifth summit of the Americas. The financial problems at the Caribbean Media Corporation are also on the cards. Edward Lane, The Six O'Clock News.
Well, a crime prevention strategy which places emphasis on violence in schools and against females was endorsed by COSOD at its 17th meeting. This is according to Acting Assistant Secretary General of Human and Social Development, Dr. Edward Green. Dr. Green says that in early December, ODC and CARICOM will meet to look at the various issues and what can be done. Green had said that even though crime is prevalent across the Caribbean countries like Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as some OECS countries, may be mostly affected. Conservation International has embarked on a 30 million U.S. dollar project to develop ecotourism products and services within Region 9. Technical manager Curtis Bernard says communities are expected to benefit directly from this venture. More in this report. A grant from the Inter-American Development Bank, Conservation International is hoping to develop the ecotourism potential of the Rupununi. The organization believes that this could be a turning point for the region since it aims to develop human welfare and livelihood while embracing ecosystem protection. And according to technical manager Curtis Bernard, the area has vast resources which could generate significant revenue and employment opportunities. Uh, the the type of tourism that the, the type of potential that exists within the Rupununi, uh, as I mentioned before, is based a lot on the natural and the cultural resources of the region. Uh, boarding tourism is something that has taken off in a big way in the Rupununi. Uh, nature tourism for other other species of animals and so on, and, and actually enjoying the natural beauty of the Rupununi is what is appealing to, to visitors. Uh, so by developing tourism as a, a means for development for the communities, the communities will have a, a greater incentive for keeping the, the, the natural ecosystems and keeping their own cultural practices and so on intact. While some communities have embarked on similar initiatives, Bernard says this project aims to develop a broader approach. In this regard, he notes that the outputs could determine a way forward for the industry. There really isn't a regional, uh, a regional plan for tourism, per se. So a lot of the investments that have been happening in the region uh, in tourism would have been, I don't want to say ad hoc, but they would have been standalone uh, standalone sort of investment. So one community would say, well, we are interested in ecotourism, we're going to set up a lodge and we're going to be doing this. And then the neighboring community might want to do something very similar without looking at the regional aspects of it. Meanwhile, the technical manager has indicated his organization's intention to provide skills training for persons in the various communities. He notes that assistance will also be provided to form linkages and markets in the local and international tourism industries. Reporting for the 6 o'clock news, I'm Shard Lal.